Hey, uh, there's still over 600 of you here, so I'm going to switch it over to over to my legacy file here, and I'm also going to pull up the page of Thomas's handouts to show you um, the veteran I identification strategy that I want to use here. So bring that over here. The, the way I got to the handouts was I was on his uh, webinar page here, and I clicked on Download Syllabus. Of course, uh, you need to log in for that, but here's that page um, where he talks about the age, location, and more. So as a review, he's saying uh, if your ancestor was age 18 to 30 during the period of 1812 to 1815, in other words, born between 1782 and 96, then there's a chance that they served. And, uh, and then he talked about location. So let's switch over here to legacy. And if you click on the search tab, now, you could click on Find, or just click right here where it says Census List, and you'd never think to click on that, but that'll take you right to uh, this special tool. So I'll click there, and uh, these are all the different searching tabs. Uh, but the Census List tab, it's not really uh, just a Census List anymore, but rather it should be renamed as Who Was Alive on This Date? because that's what this will do for you. And you can use it for anything, not just for finding uh, census people or War of 1812 people, or even any people just here in, in this country. You can use it for other countries. You can type in a state. Uh, but step number one is just type in the name of the place where you know that the person was. So uh, in, in this case, uh, I'll just leave it at at United States. You know, if I if I change this, let's just say to England, then that it just fills England in there for me. And it, it lets me have a quick access to the census years. So here I'll just say United States. And then uh, choose the year. So according to Thomas's handouts here, uh, well, according to the War of 1812, I'm going to type in this year, this time frame here. So uh, I'll type in 1812 to 1815. In other words, we want to know who was alive during this time uh, time span. And yes, those who are asking, yeah, this will be part of the recording as well. And then uh, now these, I think these last three, or maybe this is from the date range on down. This is all. These are new things in version eight. Now I've never told anyone. I don't think that those are new in version eight because I just it's not written down as such. Uh, okay, so. Only include the ages from, and let's go back over to our cheat sheet here. So he's saying uh, the ages of 18 to 30, so uh, born between 1782 and 1796. So I've got that listed here. He didn't say didn't say anything about um, the gender. More than likely at that time period, uh, you would just narrow it down to males. Uh, Janet, to answer your question. Only some of this is available in version 7. So these extra filters right here are just part of version 8. OK, and so uh, finally, uh, create the list. So it, you could either preview what's called the census list report, where it'll be formatted um, specifically for searching the census, or just right here, uh, create a search list. So that's what I'm going to do. If I've got everything filled in correctly here, then when I click this here, this should give me a list of all those who were alive between 1812 and 1815, if they were male, and if they were uh, between the ages of 18 and 30. And uh, this is searching my personal family file, so uh, we'll just see what happens here. OK, here at the top, I've got my search list is now 153 individuals. And as I scroll down, or as I look at the detail information over on this side, the people that are listed here should match all of the criteria that we entered. So, uh, well, here's my my <laughs> my favorite ancestor, and he it looks like he fits. He matches all of uh, that criteria. Uh, his sibling, and you know, I've never even thought to look for him. Wow, I okay, <laughs> kind of excited about that. And uh, just just keep on going down the list, and everybody here. It looks like uh, they should they should at least qualify. So 
I've got my list of 153 individuals. And, you know, there's one more thing I could do with this. I could tag these 153 individuals so, so I could easily pull them up later on. Let's do that while I'm here. Let's go to Options, Advanced Tagging. And let's use tag number seven. I'm going to use seven because I can see I haven't used that for anything yet. So tag seven is War of 1812 Candidates. And I'm going to click here where it says everyone in the search list. So if I've done that correctly, now everybody here, now while I'm only able to see the three at a time, I could, I could change that, I suppose. But uh, everyone here is now tagged on number seven. Okay, let's print the list. And first thing over on the Options tab, yeah, you can um, type in whatever title you want here. Then on uh, the Row 1 tab, this is where you would put check marks next to any data that you want to uh, display in the report. Relationship down here that I've got selected, it's not one of the default fields, and so you could click Customize. And you can choose from all these different fields if you like to. Okay, now let's uh, close that and just preview it. And uh, there's my list. Let's go down to the Browns and make sure that they're there. Yeah. So here's my list. Looks like I've got nine pages of possible uh, people that may have uh, served in this war. Uh, so there's your, there's your custom report. I'm curious, though. Maybe I just want to see. Let's narrow this down. I just want to see those on my direct line. You know, so my great-grandparents, not my first cousin seven times removed. Well, if because I've tagged those people, I can combine those tags, and this is where this is where legacy, the power of legacy, uh, comes into play. It gets fun. So let's go search. Well, I want to go back to advanced tagging just a second. Yeah, I just wanted to verify that those 153 people are tagged on number seven. So if I could do a combination of those individuals who are tagged on number seven and those that are tagged on number one, which is my direct line, then I would get a list uh, of likely less than 153 individuals. Let's just check that out. Uh, go back up to search. And I'll click on find. And on the detailed search tab is where I can do this. So I'm going to look, I'm going to put my where to look for as tag one, and that's my direct line. And then uh, I'll also add tag seven. So that's my uh, War of 1812 candidates. And let's click on Create List. And look at that. Here's my 68 individuals who are on my direct line. Uh, so they're closer. They're like my directs or their children or siblings of my directs. And uh, yeah, there, there we go. Uh, Robert's writing, how, how did I tag my direct, fan, direct line? Yeah, good question. I'll, well, before I answer that, let's just I'll click on Print and click preview and notice in the relationship column this is uh, you know these I've got four pages now uh, this top one it it looks as if he was only in Denmark and the next one looks as if he was only in England and I checked that out a little bit and uh, they are here because one of at least one of the events in their lifetime that I've recorded is linked to the location that I entered of uh, the United States in this case uh, so I'm going to have fun playing with this and uh, learning more about some of my direct line War of 1812 candidates. Let's go back to Robert's question. How did I tag my direct line? Well, I went all the way down to myself, first of all. And I, I need to turn on tagging. It's We have it disabled by default because it's kind of a, I want a, a little more advanced concept. So I'll click on Options and then Customize. And I'll scroll down to right here. It says Enable Tagging Options. So I'll click Save. You see how those, those tags now show up here. And so to tag my direct line, one way to do it is I just, with my mouse, I right-click on the number one. And that pulled up the advanced tagging screen where uh, with my name here, and I choose the tag number, I just click on the Ancestors button. And that tags my direct line. I did the same with my wife, tagged her direct line, 
Uh, so in other words, I made sure she was here, changed this to number three, and clicked Ancestors. And uh, and off we go. Okay, well, that's been fun. Uh, there's, yeah, there's still about 600 of you here today. Uh, so this will be part of the recording, so you can go back and watch this again. But as a reminder, we were doing this to, uh, to using Thomas's uh, veteran ID strategy here in his syllabus to give us a list of all those who would meet the criteria to have served in uh, in this war. Uh, Betty's asking, how did I? Let's see, how did I get the color change on my wife's tag? Yeah, you can make these any color that you want. And if you go up to Options, Customize, pretty sure that's where you do it. Maybe we have to go over to the Colors section. That it's here somewhere. I don't do it that often, and so I'm not sure where it is. And maybe I, I go into Color Change Mode. Let's just try that. And... Uh, yeah, so let's just make number seven. Let's make it yellow. So I'll click on number seven. Left, uh, right click on a tag to change the background color. Let's do that. And I'll make it this yellow. And so you see number seven is now, well, now I can't see the number. So let's uh, left click on it, like the instruction says right here. And let's make its font black. And, uh, and so there you go. So when I click on save, I might close this out. Now, anyone that's uh, tagged on number seven is going to uh, be yellow. Okay, I'll, uh, uh, Charlene, the 10% off code is 1812. Sharon, I'll answer your question. This is fun. <laughs> watch, watch Jeff live. Let's go up to the census list. Okay, Sharon's asking, why did I leave... Or right here where it says 1790, why did I leave that there? Well, this right here, this really is just a, a shortcut to filling in a date here in the date range. So watch what happens. If I change this to 1900, you see how it fills in June 1st, 1900. So, uh, yeah, but you don't have to use that shortcut. You can, like I did, I just typed in 1812 to 1815. Also use this if you're trying to find anybody in a, in a state census, for example. Uh, so you just leave out United States. I'll replace this with Minnesota, and I'll type in 1857. They had a territorial census in 1857. Thomas talked about those territorial censuses, and I don't want to limit it to people of certain ages or gender. And yeah, why not? Let's preview the census list report. So this is going through my entire family file to find anybody who would have been alive and possibly listed in that territorial census. So I've got 10 pages of individuals here I could check out. Okay, guys, it's time for lunch. I'm hungry. You're probably tired. <laughs> Thanks for being here. This was a lot of fun. I need a better way to, what, what should I say when I conclude these after webinar parties? I don't know. I just say goodbye. Anna's asking, did that list uh, only include Minnesota residents? Yeah, it, it only includes people that would have been in Minnesota at about that time period. Yeah, so Sylvia says, I could say, great webinar. Paul says, happy searching. I like Roberta. Let's, let's do it. Roberta says, Jeff out. <laughs>